Let's now get into the next big thing we want to do, and that is a portion of Lauren's interview with Haley Adams. Haley Mason, recently, pardon me, making the announcement that she's going to compete this year. And Lauren, you spoke to her, and I've listened. You know, we've we've listened to the interview that we're about to play here, uh, and not to give too much away before before we share it with everybody else. But this is clearly an athlete who is in a much better place. Oh, it's it's like night and day, and it feels like. I mean, I've interviewed her before, and this was the first time that it just felt like she was herself and wasn't trying to like fight through smiles. Like we had genuine laughter and conversation and she was just very open about what she did go through and the work that she's done on herself to not put expectations to be a certain type of Haley when we see her compete this season. But this is a new chapter in her life. It's a new Haley and whatever it is, she's going to be proud of. And I think that a lot of us can learn from like having such confidence like that after especially everything she's been through. Yeah. Well, let's get to it. Here is Lauren's interview with Haley Adams. You're not in Cookville anymore. You've recently moved. You're in Virginia. What kind of prompted that? Are you closer to family? Talk to me about that. Yeah. I mean, I met some really cool people this year, um, Josh and Haley, uh, and they've been coaching me since like the middle of the summer. They're kind of the whole reason I even wanted to compete again. Um, but yeah, I met them and we just really hit it off and they were going to be leaving California. Oh boy. <laughs> and um, they were leaving California oh, and, they, and they were going to be relocating um, down here. And I was like, I mean, it would be really cool to be able to ooh, train. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's okay. He agrees. <laughs> to be able to train with them in person um, because I again I just I really really like them and they've helped me a ton so it just kind of made sense to uh, head out this way and I moved away from home uh, when I was 17 so it's it was just kind of heavy on my heart the last year or so to be closer to family um, just because you know like everyone's getting older and you kind of look back and like, man, I don't want to regret not, you know, spending time with people that you love. So that was just heavy on my heart to be closer to them. Um, and I'm like way closer, um, in Virginia. So yeah, that's kind of it. Let's go back then to 2017 when you, that's when you were 17 years old, uh, 2018 or 2018, you know, moving away from home at such a young age. I mean, you see people do it to move to university or to college, but moving to a training camp where you're not living with roommates or in a dorm or part of an ecosystem with other people your age that I'm curious, like what went into the decision process of picking up, moving away from home and just kind of starting a life on your own out there? Yeah. I mean, it made the most sense for uh, my career. Like obviously it kind of took off after I moved there and I got some really good training. Um, so I knew that if I wanted to be better, I needed to surround myself with people that were better than me and, you know, just bring me up and help me. So that was kind of the deciding factor of moving there so young and it was hard and it, it definitely helped shape, shape me as an athlete that I am right now. But, um, yeah, it was, it was a really, it was hard cause I, I did, love my home so much, my family, but I'm glad I did it because it, it taught me a lot about myself. So how has this new environment living in Virginia been? You're no longer part of a major training camp. You're just at, I don't know what normal is anymore, but a normal affiliate with members and it's probably different in many ways. So what has that yeah. been like so far? Um, over the last few years, I kind of got to a place where training with uh, other elite athletes was just like not fun for me anymore just because I'm so competitive that it was just all the time that you're competing with someone and it just starts to mess with your head um, so I mean anyone that knows me knows I don't care who you are I don't care what your level is you can literally do the most scaled version I just want people to work out with me like I just grab random people at the gym like hey you want to work out 
Like, and it just kind of becomes a joke because no one, like, ever tells me no. Because I just, it's just, I can't, it's just my thing. So, like, even at, when I was at Mayhem the last year, like, I just grabbed some, like, people from the gym. Hey, you want to work out? Like, I just want people to work out with me. I don't care who you are. Um, so, it's been really cool being here because I've made a lot of new friends that are so down to work out. You know, they, they scale it to their ability and so that they can still push me as well. Um, and then, of course, I have Josh and Haley here as well. But, yeah, I just I, – I'm so happy. Uh, it's a really good environment. Um, it's it's kind of what I've been looking for for a little bit. So, yeah, I really like it. It's interesting because I feel like there was this time where – training camps were so big and it seemed like anybody who wanted to have a career in CrossFit was picking up their bags and moving to a major training camp. But now we're seeing a little bit of a shift where they might still be training with the camp, but they're not packing their bags and moving. How have you seen like the evolution of your training from being in that environment to now following a different program, being in an affiliate, working out with people who are probably at my skill level when it comes to CrossFit? Um, I will say it's like the environment is just like a bit more lighter, uh, which is kind of what I need just because I get so wrapped up in all of it and just get too serious sometimes. Um, so it, it's definitely you know, it keeps me smiling, keeps me happy. We have a good time. Like I said, I've made a, a lot of friends here. Um, but yeah, it just, it's a lot better for me. Um, but I think maybe other people realize that sometimes too, like the whole competing thing every day and just com- constantly comparing yourself isn't the best thing to do. Um, and everyone's different. Everyone, you know, trains differently, whatever. It just, I knew that if I was going to have a uh, successful year and wanted to just be happy and you know, have a good time, um, and still work really hard and not get all caught up in, you know, competing and just really training. Um, mm-hmm. that that's kind of what I needed to do. So I definitely want to get into this season and this year, but let's first go back to, I mean, you were the first athlete that we saw be the champion of the teen division and then directly not just go into the elite women's division, but make top 10, make it through all of those cuts in 2019 and then finish sixth just outside of top five. Like that is something that the sport has never seen before. What was the, what was it like for Haley Adams to accomplish something like that? And especially with all of the outside uh, validation that you probably were getting at the time from fans, family, and coaches. Uh, 2019 was probably one of my favorite years that I've ever competed just because I didn't even think I was going to make the games that year. So like even just being there, I was so excited, so happy. And I was like, who cares? Like I have no pressure. Like I can just get cut first. At least I'm here. Like no pressure at all. (laughs) I had the best time. And then I just kept making it through the cuts again with no expectations. Like I was just, if I would have got cut at 40, I'd be like, that was really cool. Good job. You know? And I just kept making it. So every time I made a cut, it was, like, the best feeling. And, like, everyone was so shocked. And I just – I had the best time that year because I just had no pressure. And that was, yeah, one of my favorite years for sure. When you look back at your time in the teenage division, did you ever have that lightheartedness that you had in 2019 of competing? Or was there still a lot of pressure? Um, I definitely think I felt pressure as a teenager. Uh, just because, like, I, I feel like I started and was, like, top three, like, all the time. So I always felt pressured. I feel like I needed to win or, you know, be the best. So I, I definitely had pressure in that division. Mm. So then when you look at 2019 and then getting back into training for 2020, obviously the COVID year and it was weird, but you were one of five who competed in person how do you feel like your mindset or just that pressure had changed from 2019 to 2020 that was also a really cool year and different um just because of there's only five people but I did not expect to make top five in that either so that was a really cool surprise I mean I had pressure for sure to you know do well but I wasn't expecting to make top five um So even doing that was kind of like that 2019 moment where it's like, oh, well, I'm top five. So, you know, that's (laughs) already got that placement. 
Um, so, I mean, I definitely still had pressure then, and I really wanted to get on the podium, but it, it, ha it hadn't built up that much yet. You keep saying that you, you didn't expect to reach these goals that we all watched you accomplish. Was there ever a change in where you did expect something, but you came short? Um, I mean, at the 2020 games, at the end, I was in a podium spot and then wasn't sure if I was going to hold it and ended up losing at the last event. So that, that hurt pretty bad to uh, lose that podium spot. Um, but again, I guess I kind of wasn't expecting to be on the podium. But when, when I had it and it was so close, it, that hurt pretty bad. Um, and then the next year, in 2021, when I really wanted to get on the podium that got fifth, that, that was pretty soul-crushing because, like, I'm just so close and I just can't, I can't get it, you know? So that, that, that was really hard. Did you feel like with the evolution of your career in CrossFit that the mind shift, the mindset shifted when you stopped surprising yourself, if that makes sense? Yeah, because I put so many expectations on myself and thought that that's all anyone cared about for me and that's all that mattered in my life was a placement on a leaderboard. So when I couldn't achieve that or came up short, it felt like the end of the world, literally. Was there one moment in particular that you remember feeling like, I don't want to do this anymore or maybe there is a different path for me or something like that? I saw that a little bit at the end of 2021 after coming up short, but then I just kind of, you know, kept going. Um, but basically all of 22, 2022, I was not happy at all and felt that constantly. Like, I, I didn't want to compete. I dreaded, like, you know, even going. I would, like, hope the, the competition day wouldn't come because I know that I'm just, like, I was miserable and I was just unhappy and felt so much pressure, so much stress, anxiety. Um, so that was basically all of 2022. Is this something that you like ever confided in with other athletes or people at mayhem or support systems? Or was it one of those things where you, you certainly are not weak, but you felt like, Oh, I'm weak. If I verbalize these feelings and I need to just push through. Yeah, no, that's exactly it. Cause it's honestly feels a little bit embarrassing. It's like, wh why are you feeling like this? Why can't you just do it? Like everyone else is doing it. Like, because, I mean, social media is fake, so you can't ever tell what anyone else is. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> so, but that's what it felt like. And then you see everyone else around you, and they're just happy, and they're going on with their lives, and they're training, and they're having a good time. And I'm just, like, literally miserable. It's all I can do just to get in there and get it all done, which, ironically, like, I would just stay in there all day and beat the crap out of myself working out, which doesn't really make sense for as much as I disliked it at the time. But, yeah, it, it was just, that was just a dark time. <laughs> What was it like for you when your body is changing, you're trying to get stronger, you're trying to put on muscle, but you're also dealing with all of these like internal feelings that are not the normal feelings to have at such a young age when you're also a professional athlete? Yeah, I mean, dealing with all of that at a young age and having eyes on you and just people commenting on the way you look and it basically nonstop is definitely one of the hardest things that I had to deal with and try to, you know, figure out because again, it's like, okay, well I'm supposed to be strong and I'm supposed to be like putting on muscle, but not too much muscle because then you're like, you can't do the things that you're good at. And it, it's just, it, it felt so, like, it was never ending. Like it, it felt like you could never be good enough. Um, and of course you deal with body dysmorphia and, yeah, I, I've definitely had my fair share of all of those feelings. And it's it's so sad to look back at like all of my teenage years and be like, you were so beautiful and you couldn't see it. And then you literally thought like you were so ugly and you just wanted to hide yourself. And like, I still deal with that. And mm -hmm. I'm like, that is so far from the truth. And I just, that's my wish is that young girls could just see how beautiful they are. And especially in a, in a world of, like crazy beauty standards that you're enough and you're beautiful. And yeah, and that's just something I believe so hard in because I struggled so badly with that. Um, yeah. So when you 
put that post on social media saying that you were going to take care of yourself now and you weren't going to compete in 2023. How many times did you write that post before it actually became reality? Honestly, it still didn't feel real even after I posted it. I was like, wait, like, am I going to compete? Like, should I still do it? Because it's, this, it's been my life for eight years now. It's all I've known. So just like the unknown of what I was going to do was super scary. And I definitely had doubts about it. Of like, should I just suck it up? Like, blah, blah, blah. Like, even when I was trying to write the post. And I rewrote it like so many times because I wanted it to be right. I wanted it to come from my heart and how I felt and hopefully have an impact on someone else. Um, I was actually at Disney World when I posted that. <laughs> Yeah. What a great place to then go feel much better with all the characters and the rides. Exactly. I was like, well, I know it's going to be a really hard week for me. So I literally posted that post and went and roller coasters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the best like way to have therapy if you could pick yeah. a, a way to go I, out. I hit post and was like on the Tower of Terror within 10 minutes. The <laughs> temptation to just like, become a Disney blogger is so real because they pay or yeah, they literally pay people and send them out and like they make vlogs at Disney world. I'm like, that is so tempting. I can have like a whole part-time gig. I'm just being a Disney influencer. And I'm like, I'm wasting time. I, sh I should be doing that. <laughs> These are the years that you need to make it happen. Haley. <laughs> I, know. I know. I'm like, I can have a part-time gig as a Disney influencer. Like, Gotta do it. Gotta <laughs> Add it to the list of things that you want to accomplish speaking in life. Of, speaking of, so I was so excited because I was like, oh my gosh, it's going to be perfect at semifinals because like all of my family is going to be there. And, you know, then we can just go to Disney World after because, you know, it's in Orlando. It was in Orlando last year. <gasps> of course, of course, they move it back to Knoxville. I'm like, I don't want to go to that place again. I want to go to Orlando. I was like, of course, the year I take off. It is in Orlando. Of course. I'm so if we could just like turn back the clocks and you took off this year instead of last yes. year so you could have experienced yes. Disney like, after Orlando. Going to Disney with like I was literally gonna start planning it. Like before they uh, like announced it. I was like, perfect. Like I'm gonna stay there for a week after, like all my family will be there. Of course. That is just my life. Oh, life. man. Well, well hopefully, hopefully everybody is listening right now. And for 2025, they can plan that so yeah. that Haley can go to Disney <laughs> World after. That would be great. That would be great. Well, so many have people wait. actually did that. No, I'm, I'm sure they did in Universal. Um, I would totally oh, do I that. I mean, Universal. I do too. I, I like Universal too. But next year, I better, I better put it back. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, put in a little uh, asterisk note. Move it to Orlando so Haley can go to Disney World. <laughs> yes, thank you, because now I'm going to have to wait till after the games. Oh, so at what moment did you decide, I am going to compete or I am going to put it on my list to try to make the 2024 CrossFit Games? Was this like a little, an earworm, we'll call it, that slipped into your mind and then it just grew? Or was it, I'm doing this, I'm committed, and we're going to let it go? Yeah, honestly, I was ready to be done with CrossFit after I posted that and like all the way up until April. And then that's when I met Josh and Haley. Um, and they we just kind of like talked a little bit. And just the words they said to me hadn't really been said to me before. And they just kind of sparked something inside of me again to be like, huh, maybe I could do this again. You know, so... That's why I say when they're the reason I'm competing, they're the reason because I just, they believed in me and they wanted to help me and help me be happy. And the thing about them is they care about me as a person. So just being around them and them, you know, hyping me up and just everything about them is, they're, they're one of the biggest reasons that I'm competing again. I mean, of course I want to, but them just talking to me and hearing someone like believe in me and, just wanting to help, just to help was, yeah, they're, they're the best. What was it that they said to you that resonated with you and you're like, okay, I'm going to do this. 
I don't remember like certain phrases, but I just remember being on FaceTime with them and just the things that they were saying to me. I was like, it just lit a little bit of a spark. And and I just hadn't felt that in so long of like, oh, like maybe I can do it again or I want to do it again. Um, and I, I started to feel that with them. Um, and they just, yeah, they've given me so much more confidence in myself and just made me believe. And I'll do like a simple snatch at like 135. And if it's good, they're like screaming and like hyping me up. And I've, I've never had that before. And it's been really new to me. But just to have like them be so hype and just want to help me just, just because they, they love to CrossFit and they love the sport has been one of the biggest things for me this year. So how is this year going to be different and almost taking some of those feelings that you had in 2019 and rechanneling that Haley or maybe even a new version? Yeah, I, honestly, I do kind of feel like a 2019 year. Like, I don't think people are going to be like, oh, she's going to be getting for the podium. Like, blah, blah, blah. like, I'm always going to try my best. Like, that, you know, that's just who I am. I'm always going to work hard. Um, but this year I just, I really just want to go out and be proud of myself and proud of the work I put in. If that's 10th place school, if that's 30th place, I mean, at least I try my best. Um, and I'm not going to let that define me or who I am anymore. Um, I feel like I have a really good support system now to not let those negative thoughts in. Um, and I just feel like I've built a lot of balance in my life this year where it's like my time in the gym is my time in the gym. It's like focus, focus, work hard. But as soon as I leave, I got to cut it off because before I used to just, it consumed me and I feel like I didn't do enough for this or that. And it would just make me so miserable. So that's been something I've worked on is just cutting it off uh, when I leave the gym and finding things to do and hanging out with friends. Um, that Those are been big things this year and I'm just, yeah, I'm really excited for this year. Big thanks to Haley Adams for taking the time to talk with Lauren. If you are one of our patrons, the entirety of that interview, the whole audio version, nothing cut out, will be available on Patreon. And if you want to support us on Patreon, you can go to patreon.com slash talking elite fitness and sign up to be an official friend of the show. And you will get access to exclusive content and our live Friday Q and A's that we do that are always uh, such a good time. But there's, there's something that really stood out to me in that interview. And we talked about it going in about how she's in a better place. And I, I've seen this with, you see it in sports all the time, Tommy, I'm sure you've gone through it. You know, if you're ever on a team or a fan of a team that is going through a losing streak or they're going through tough times or they're struggling, what is like the one common thing that they do when they, when they come out of it, that they say, it's like, we are, we, well, we just started having more fun. We started the going yeah. back to the way that we played when we enjoyed it. We had to get our mindset right. You know, it's, it's very rarely is it a, well, you know, there are some logistical things or some strategic things we weren't doing well. It always comes back to simplifying and having fun. And that's the feeling that I got from Haley is that she found a place where she's enjoying this now. She's not putting as much pressure on herself. And we see it all the time and we hear it all the time, especially from CrossFit Games athletes. When they say, I went in with no expectations and I was just trying to have fun, where they get their best performances from that. And that's the feeling I got from Haley. Yeah, and based and on her it, stats and everything, those are the years that she performed the best is when she didn't have any expectations mm -hmm. for herself. Yeah. And, and it speaks to like what you were saying, Sean, with like the team sports too. It really comes down to a sense of self and identity, right? It's like, hey, when those teams or, or athletes like let all the other stuff in that muddies the scenario for mm -hmm. them, it's like, all right, how do I get back to like, like why did I get into this? Because I love it and I enjoy it. And what aspects of was I doing where uh, like as a team or as an individual was I doing to um, to make this fun and really highlight those aspects? And it's it's you're so spot on with that, because I've been a part of those teams where it's like, mm -hmm. hey, we have all this. We have all this talent. We have all these good players and uh, we're just not clicking. And I think we've let all the other negative stuff creep in. And we just got back to enjoying ourselves and enjoying each other's company as teammates. And and then magic happens there. And there was. Lauren, you did a phenomenal job that that was simultaneously heartbreaking and inspiring at the same time. Oh, yeah. like, and, and I think that's important that she was willing and able to be vulnerable and showcase both sides of that. Mm -hmm. Right. Because hearing her talk about feeling ugly and always feeling less than like that's heartbreaking. Like you never want to see a young man or young woman who is coming up in a sport and really starting to build their dream and their future out for themselves have to do that. Um, 
especially when like the exact opposite is true, you know? And, mm -hmm. and so for her to touch into that and then, you know, simultaneously, simultaneously be, be finally mm -hmm. able to identify that, Hey, your body, mind, and spirit are not in alignment here. And this is not a recipe for long-term success. And um, the fact that even in that moment, she was able to finish ninth, win two events at the games, like placement's not important, but it speaks to her, like her fighting spirit, I think, mm -hmm. and just her resiliency as a human being to still be able to do that. And that makes me just excited to see what uh, a fully aligned and happy Haley Adams does, not from a, a finishing her placement, but just to see like a positive person out on the competition floor enjoying that. Because I think, you know, people do look up to her and people look to her. And I think she's a great example of what you can do when when you, you know, focus on the self too. And we're seeing Mal go through something similar. And uh, it's not always tied to, to placement or anything like that. But it, it's it was also like, hey, like even at such a young age to have that maturity to do that is 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 inspiring to say the least. Yeah, agreed. But it also Happy proves that Haley this season. Yeah, yeah, it also proves that Disneyland is the happiest place on earth. I know, right? And they one hundred percent. We should all aspire to be Disney <laughs> bloggers. Apparently, that sounds like a great job. I yes, want so her to get a part-time job there oh, so would, bad. Oh, that'd be and awesome. Just a tease for like the full interview that people can see. Mm -hmm. You two need to watch it because we talk a little bit about Star Wars and how some of the um, like her pump-up music is the Star Wars theme song. So it, Haley oh, and, I for you. Haley and I just become best friends. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's fantastic. That, also, that'd be an awesome job. You tell me you get to go eat turkey legs, churros, and dole whip and get paid uh -huh. for it. Like uh duh. Uh, I'd be pretty to, damn happy. Oh you man. Want me to like, I don't know, build a lightsaber and a droid and go, you know, have some right. tools in the park. Be my Darn. guest. Yeah, uh, no, Sean and is, I do that anyways. Exactly. Like that's just that's just another attempt to meet you get paid. responsibility. Now, yeah, there's actually a job for this. All right, yeah, let's let's do it. But uh, big thanks to Haley Adams uh, for doing that. Really looking forward to watching her compete uh, in in 2020.